Hello there. Welcome to the Raf Terra channel. My name is Raf and I aim to provide the best legends of Runeterra content on the internet. I am a master rank player who has played in the professional level of LOR. I've competed in several seasonal tournaments and participated in the qualifiers for the 2021 World Championship. Today, I'm bringing to you my full guide on Talia Zig's combo landmarks, the deck that I used to climb in my NA Smurf account from Platinum 4 to Diamond 1 at 70% win rate. After watching this video, and with the right amount of practice, I'm confident that you will be able to reach masters with this deck. Here is the deck list I used. I will also put the deck code in the description of this video. Talia Ziggs is a combo midrange deck that is built around landmark synergy. The name of the game for this deck is Tempo. But what exactly is Tempo? Tempo is a card game concept that has multiple definitions depending on who you are asking. You may have heard of players refer to Tempo as board presence, momentum, advantage, and many other terms. But to keep it simpler to understand, I look at Tempo as a measure of how much mana you spend and how much it affects the number of stats on board. For example, using Vengeance on a Zoe is a low tempo play because you are spending 6 mana in order to remove a 1-1 statted unit for a total of 2 stats. Whereas if you use Vengeance on a Captain Farron, this is a high tempo play because you are spending 6 mana in order to remove an 8-8 statted body for a total of 16 stats. Another example of tempo when it comes to playing units is playing a Maokai compared to playing a Rumble. For both cards, you spend 4 mana, but you get more stats, you get more tempo from playing Rumble over playing Maokai. Tempo is where the Talia Ziggs landmark combo deck shines. One of the main cards that glues this deck together is Endless Devout. By spending 3 mana when playing this card, you get a 3-3 body and a Sarcophagus, a landmark that later turns into a 5-3 body of Fearsome. That's a total of 14 stats that you get only for 3 mana. Another high tempo card that this deck is running is Desert Naturalist. On its own, Desert Naturalist is a low tempo play because you only get stats of 2-4 for spending 4 mana. However, in a deck where you generate lots of landmarks, it will be very easy to always get a 5-4 Grumpy Rock Bear alongside this 2-4 body. The champions that we are running are Ziggs and Talia, two champions that level up the more landmarks you summon. These two champions will be your closers in most games. To level up these champions, we are running all the good landmarks and good cards that generate landmarks. Endless Devout, Inventive Chemist, Rock Hopper, and Preservarium. Once Talia and Ziggs have leveled up, you can give them Overwhelm with the Absolver or the Herald of Magus in order to inflict big amounts of damage in one attack. Another reason why I love this deck is because of the flexibility of utility cards that we run in order to halt our opponent's game plan. Desert Naturalist is a efficient landmark removal that can shut down Mono Shirima or Targon's Peak decks. Rite of the Arcane can be used to remove key backline units like Aphelios or Seraph. Quicksand is a recently buffed Shirima spell that can be used to stop elusive combo decks with Victor, Riven, and Nyandroid. Now that we've finished with the introductions, it's time to go to the meat of this video. How exactly do you play this deck? Each game starts, of course, with the mulligan. Your mulligan will almost be the same against most decks with a few exceptions. Your ideal mulligan would comprise of the following. A unit to play in the first two turns, an endless devout, and another 3 cost unit like Ziggs or Waste Walker. Regarding the unit to play in the first two turns, you want Ancient Preparation, Inventive Chemist, and Rock Hopper. Never keep units of the same cost except if you are against aggro decks. For example, if you have both Inventive Chemist and Ancient Preparation in the Mulligan, you only want to keep one of them. Similar case when you have two copies of Rock Hopper, you only want to keep one of them. 
However, it is fine to keep Inventive Chemist and Rock Hopper together because you can play them consecutively in different turns. Endless Devout and Ziggs are cards that you want to have one copy off of each. Waste Walker is a 3 cost unit that you keep only and only if you already have Inventive Chemist or Rock Hopper. Depending on the matchup, you can keep utility cards like Desert Naturalist or Quicksand, but only and only if you already have early units. After the mulligan, games usually go in the following pattern. You play a unit in the first two turns and progress your champion level ups. If it's made of sand, I can light it. On turns 3 to 4, you want to play Endless Devout, Ziggs, or Waste Walker. During these turns, you will also look to inflict as much damage as you can to the opponent Nexus to make closing the game easier later. You want to trade off Endless Devout as soon as possible. After that, you want to play Talia and duplicate your sarcophagus. Once duplicated, you can use Desert Naturalist or Right of the Arcane on the sarcophagus in order to get the tempo advantage over your opponent. From there onwards, you can start closing out games with your tempo and your level 2 champions. Now that you have a good idea of how to play the deck, let's go into some general tips. You want to trade off your Endless Devout as soon as possible. Talia and Desert Naturalist will be awkward cards to have in hand if you do not have a Sarcophagus on board. You can force trades with opposing units that have become vulnerable due to Roiling Sands. Keep your board space in mind especially if you have Talia in hand. There will be situations where you want to trade off your units inefficiently in order to make space for your kill combos with Talia, Explosive Minefield is one of your main combo cards. On your attack turns, you can stun multiple enemies if you combine Explosive Minefield with Talia, Desert Naturalist, Rite of the Arcane, or Unleashed Energy. You already have the tempo advantage just with your board stats. Explosive Minefield further allows you to prevent opposing units from blocking your wide board. Waste Walker is a card that can go out of control if played correctly. If you already played an early Inventive Chemist or Rock Hopper, playing Waste Walker on turn 3 will allow it to grow stats if your opponent does not remove it immediately. You can also use Unraveled Earth with Waste Walker to put your opponent in a dilemma. The amount of burn damage that this deck has is often underestimated. Pokey Sticks and level 2 Ziggs when combined with your landmarks will accumulate lots of damage over time. I recommend this deck for climbing in the current meta because we are favored into popular decks like Mono Shirima and Targon Speak. This deck is unfavored against super fast aggro decks like Pirate Aggro or Spider Burn. But outside of that, there are no matchups that felt unwinnable. This deck is very explosive and you can find lethal damage out of nowhere. Before we delve into specific matchups, make sure to join my Discord channel so that you can view my tips and tricks for deck matchups that I will not be able to cover in this video. Link will be in the description below. The first matchup that we will cover is the most popular deck of the meta, Mono Shurima. In the mulligan, you want to follow the general mulligan tips. You can also keep Desert Naturalist if you already have a good hand. In this game, I followed the General Mulligan and I threw away everything except Rock Hopper. The matchup against Mono Shurima is very favored. A common misconception in this matchup is that you need to destroy the Sun Disk to win. In reality, you will just overwhelm them with your tempo before they even flip the Sun Disk. See what is. I go. 
Here, my opponent needs to attack to progress Azir's level up, which means he trades with my Endless Devout. Playing Ziggs and Endless Devout consecutively on turns 3 to 4 is something that will happen often. This is where you can start inflicting chip damage to the enemy Nexus. In this timeline, we're sure to save Ikatia. Here, I played Waste Walker because the sarcophagus will count down next turn, and we want to get the bonus stats. It is In this spot, I used Pokey Stick on the Rock Hopper in order to remove the Fearsome Blocker. This is potentially 5 damage directly to the Nexus with the Restored Devout. My board! You can see here what Tempo Advantage can give us. We inflicted lots of damage in a single attack. I started with Rite of the Arcane here which is a misplay. I lost a mana gem without spending it first. The correct play would be to use Rock Hopper first so that we would have already used the mana gem that we will destroy. After my misplay, I planned to destroy the Hourglass Statue with Desert Naturalist. However, my opponent was representing 4 mana, so I need to expect a Rite of Negation. With this in mind, I play Rock Hopper first to make sure that I will be able to summon the Roiling Sands, which will allow my Ziggs to level up next turn in the scenario that my opponent responds with Rite of Negation. My opponent did have Rite of Negation. If I had played Desert Naturalist first before Rock Hopper, I would not have enough board space to summon the Roiling Sands, which means that Ziggs will not level up. The next turn, the Sun Disk flips, but the damage from level 2 Ziggs and Waste Walker is too much for my opponent to stop. Even if my opponent uses Quicksand here, I would still have enough damage with Pokey Stick in hand. I personally did not lose a single match against Mono Shurima, so if you're facing lots of Mono Shurima, 
this deck will be a good counter to it. Hey, if you haven't noticed yet, this video is completely ad-free so that you can watch continuously without interruption. If you like the content so far and you want to support me, please like the video and leave a comment. Also, consider subscribing if you want more videos like this. The next matchup that we will cover is against another popular meta deck, Riven Victor Combo. For the mulligan, as usual, you follow the general mulligan tips. You can also keep quicksand if you have a good hand. Following the general mulligan tips, I kept Ziggs and Rockhopper in my opener. Let's get to work. You can use ancient preparations to fill up what you are lacking in your hand. In this game, I predicted a endless devout. In this spot, I do not take the trade because I can potentially kill a 1 HP vulnerable unit for free with Ziggs. I was able to draw Quicksand. This will be helpful to stop elusive attacks later on. Here, I went for the attack and got the free kill on the vulnerable unit. I don't mind my Ziggs dying in this spot because I had another copy in hand. Ziggs champ spell can be a bit awkward to use so I'm actually glad that this happened. I started my turn with a Presser Varium to check what I can draw. <laughs> Desert Naturalist into the Roiling Sands here is a big tempo play. I've now inflicted significant amount of damage to the opposing Nexus. If I can survive the next attack, I will most likely win this game. Quicksand and Rite of the Arcane are two utility cards that are very useful in this matchup. I just need to play reactively and we should be able to survive this attack turn.
Quicksand in this spot is a no-brainer. Riven Victor doesn't run any combat tricks that can save Victor. Here, I pass first because just a simple Riven would not pose any threat. He needs to use the Blade of the Exile first before attacking. No turning back now. Now that my opponent used Blade of the Exile, I used my Rite of the Arcane for maximum value. Another Riven is played, but this is not a threat to me. Even a fragment knocks out lives. Violence to end violence. Power away! It must be done. Next turn, with level 2 Ziggs and Absolver in hand, we close the game out. The matchup against Riven Victor is very even. They have lots of burn and similar to us, they can output lots of damage in a single turn. However, if we will be able to draw into our utility spells, we will be able to halt their game plan. On the other hand, they can't really do much to stop us from closing out games with Talia in our attack turns. For the final matchup, we will go into a mirror match. The general mulligan tips is enough to follow for this matchup. In the mirror, it's very important to be the aggressor. You will be both inflicting significant damage to each other with level 2 Talia. If you are the player who exerts pressure first, your opponent will need to waste resources on defense instead of on offense. In this game, I have two Hexplosive Minefields in hand, which I can use both defensively and offensively depending on how the next turns go. I'm slightly ahead in tempo early because of the inventive chemist that I played on turn 1. In this spot, I played Endless Devout instead of Ziggs because these games can go down to who is able to play more copies of Sarcophagus. I want to trade my Endless Devout as early as possible to get the tempo advantage during the mid game. I also do not want to trade away Ziggs this early since his level 2 burn can be a big factor. On my attack turn, I start applying pressure with the Hexplosive Minefield combo. Unfortunately, he defends with a combo of his own. I am still in the advantageous position because with my combos, I am inflicting Nexus damage, whereas my opponent is using his combos in a defensive turn.
After the exchange, we both have strong boards and it's now his turn to exert pressure back. With the difference in our Nexus health, all I need to do is to survive this attack, then I can close out the game next turn. By being the aggressor during this game, we win quite easily. I usually end the video by discussing how to tweak the deck. However, for this build, I'm quite confident that there is no need to change anything. The ratios in this build are optimized in a way that you can still consistently pull off combos while having enough flexibility with your utility cards. We can potentially improve our matchup against aggro decks by adding more early units, but that would just hurt our chances in games against other archetypes. In case you are wondering why I didn't push this deck all the way to masters, it's because I want my NA smurf account to stay in diamond. I want my series of videos to be true to the purpose of sharing decks that can climb from lower ranks to masters. My next deck guides will feature decks that I'm using to climb in my smurf account from low diamond all the way to diamond 1. Make sure to subscribe so that you won't miss out on anything. Good luck climbing, have a nice day, bye bye